Okay, this is lecture 4B for History 111. Um, today I'm going to talk about Mesoamerica. And we previously have talked about it, several civilizations, in ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, the Indus River Valley, China, etc., um, that all developed agriculture somewhere between, you know, De developed or borrowed agriculture somewhere between four, uh, 8,000 and, and 4,000 BC. Um, today we're going to move to Mesoamerica, which is an entirely different continent, and we're going we're gonna to be on a slightly different timeline. And <clears throat> the reason for that is just that the, the, the development of agriculture happened in a different fashion in the Americas, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a, uh, in a bit. Um, and, but keep in mind the Jared Diamond thesis that I talked about earlier, that, that the, the, pr the development of civilization depends in part on the possibility, the possible candidates they have for domesticated plants and animals, um, as well as metals and things like that. Um, and keep in mind the Fitvogel thesis that, that often large centralized governments and cities, et cetera, are the result of hydraulic societies, water management societies, rather than societies that develop agriculture um, without, have, without needing to do irrigation. So <clears throat> Mesoamerica is a term, it literally means middle America, but what it's referring to is southern Mexico and Central America. Okay, so the civilizations we're talking about developed here in, in uh, Mexico and Central America. Um, there were other civilizations that developed in South America. We're going to talk about those in a different lecture. Um, so agriculture first developed, I mean, the cultivation of plants uh, first developed in, in Mesoamerica, probably about 8,000 BC. But they didn't really develop a good agricultural package that would allow them to develop sedentary agricultural societies until about 4,000 BC. And the reason for that was, uh, th by, by 4000 BC, they had basically domesticated corn. And remember I talked about Teosinte is the predecessor to corn, and it's, it's got these tiny little um, cobs. And to, to turn that into corn took a long time, a lot of breeding over centuries. And then they had, to, they had to have a complete package. And it was only when they had beans, squash, and corn together that they really had a, 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 a food package that would allow for sedentary agriculture. So it was really only about 4000 BC that you start to see sedentary agriculture emerge in Mesoamerica and, and that agricultural society really took off. Now, <clears throat> it didn't, uh, we didn't get, we don't get a, a sort of centralized governments in big cities and things for quite some time. And basically, I'm going to talk about three different civilizations in Mesoamerica. The first is the Olmec, who, who emerged about 1200 BCE and, and died out about a thousand, or a 100 BCE, or their, their centralized government fell apart about 100 CE. Um, the second is the Maya, who emerged about 300 CE and, and disappeared about 1100 CE, or, or their, their empires fell apart about 1100 CE. And then I'm going to talk about Teotihuacan, which flourished between 200 and 750 CE. CE is just common era. It's, it's equivalent to the Christian AD. Um, so I'm going to talk about these three civilizations, in, in, and you see that they're, they're, uh, these two were, were um, contemporary, but this one was a predecessor to both of the others. And in a sense, they all make up a single civilization because the Olmec, the, the cultural influence of the Olmec clearly was, was profound upon the Maya and Teotihuacan. They basically took Olmec society and kept developing it. And so you can really culturally talk about one society developing over all three of these uh, civilizations. So the Olmec emerge on the Gulf of Mexico um, in southern Mexico. Um, and, and, you know, people had been there for several thousand years doing agriculture. But you start to see a complex, uh, organized society emerge about 1200. And, and the Olmec... Um, we don't have a whole lot of writing from them. We don't. We, we have some archaeological digs. We don't. We don't know a whole heck of a lot about them. Um, one of the most prominent things is they they like to cr to carve these enormous stone heads that were thousands and thousands of pounds each, like 10, 12 foot high stone heads, and and leave those lying about. Um, but the Olmec also built monumental pyramids, just like the, they did in Mesopotamia and Egypt. Um, and they developed uh, pretty big cities. Initially, we're pretty sure the cities were just ceremonial centers, that people lived in small villages doing agriculture most of the year, and they would just gather at these ceremonial centers at certain times of the year for festivals or religious ceremonies or things like that. 
and then and then they would go away again. And so these initially it was just a religious center with maybe a few priests and people living there. But then gradually over time they began to congregate into cities and they began to emerge as, as seriously large cities. Um, some of the cities uh, in uh, uh, I'm going to jump ahead to the Maya for a second, but but by the time of the Maya, some of the cities, like by 700 CE, some of the cities were, were 40,000 people, right? Which is it was huge for cities. But uh, the Olmecs were not that big. But um, So the Olmec emerged with the corn bean squash trio, and they began to do monumental architecture, and they began to develop complex civilization. Um, and, and a lot of the cultural artifacts that I'm going to talk about came started with the Olmecs. Um, but the Olmecs begin to die out, and then you see this second civilization emerge in the Maya. The Maya were farther south. They were in, they were in part, part of southern Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Um, but they were also farther south into modern-day Honduras and Guatemala. And the Maya um, are now getting into really tropical uh, agriculture here. And one of the interesting things is the Maya actually were sort of a hydraulic civilization because – they got lots of rainfall. I mean, just lots and lots of just rainfall. And in order to do agriculture well, they actually had to drain their fields. So they actually had to dig irrigation ditches, et cetera, to, run, to get rid of rainwater. Um, so they, and, and that required a certain amount of organization and manpower, labor, et cetera. Um, so the Maya emerged about 300 CE until about 1100 CE. That's roughly the Middle Ages in Europe. Um, and at, at the same time as the Maya, or during that period of the Maya, um, you see Teo, Teotihuacan emerge. Now, Teotihuacan is actually a city, um, and it was on the north, northern edge of, of Lake Titicaca, which is, is in Mexico. Uh, it's where Mexico City is today. It's actually on top of the lake. The lake has been filled in. Um, but Teotihuacan was a city that emerged on the northern edge of that lake, and um, this is farther north than the Maya. So the Olmec are sort of in the middle. Teotihuacan is farther north. The Maya are farther south. Um, and Teotihuacan was primarily a trading center, right? They didn't, they, none of their artwork and none of their uh, temples and things seems to celebrate war in any way. I'll talk about the Olmec and Maya in a minute, and they did celebrate war, but the Te Teotihuacan seemed to be primarily a trade empire, that they developed trade networks with lots of other cities and they had enormous influence because of the trade, but they weren't actually conquering other people. So those are the three civilizations that, that flourished at various times. And again, I want to point out, these are, you know, quite a bit later than the other civilizations I've talked about so far. And you might say, well, why am I bringing them up now? And the answer is that they, they essentially got a later start and they had a different trajectory of development. And so in a lot of ways, these civilizations, although they're later than ancient Mesopotamia, China, Egypt, etc., they're very similar in terms of their organization, their religion, their, um, their government structures, the irrigation systems, et cetera, trade. And so I want to talk about them here to sort of compare with that. Um, so let me turn to the, the culture. First of all, I mean, this is their agricultural societies, right? But the, the Olmecs developed a complex religion, and they, they essentially came up with this, this creation um, narrative that the gods had actually created the earth and all the human beings and everything out of corn and water, which was actually the gods' own flesh and blood, that they had used their own bodies to create the earth. And, and they actually, they thought that the gods needed to maintain the earth, and to do that, human beings had to um, help support the gods, okay? And so the 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 religion begins by talking about offerings to the gods, etc. Now later under the Maya, you see the religion develop into the idea that human beings have to offer blood to the gods to repay them for the blood that the gods spilled to create the world in the first place. And and so there's two ways this could happen. One is the Maya had lots of rituals that the ruling classes, the wealthy, the elites would do, which involved, for instance, ritually cutting themselves and forcing a certain amount of blood to come out. And they would, they would actually take super sharp stones and slice cuts in themselves, even in, the, even in sexual organs. Um, and, they would, and then they would drag pieces of, of fiber through the, through the cuts to keep them from coagulating so they kept bleeding so you could offer a certain amount of blood to the gods. Right? And then they'd have a ritual where they offered that blood to the gods. But there were other ways that the Maya also did this. And one of them was that the Maya 
in particular were an empire. They conquered other cities and, and they were constantly at war. And one of the reasons for that was that they, they would take prisoners of war, warriors who lost or on the losing side to the Maya, they would take them back to Tikal or, um, or, or one of the other Mayan cities and they would sacrifice them to the gods. And they would, they would often behead them um, to, to maximize blood flow, but they would also, also often cut off their fingers, etc., to maximize blood flow so that they could off, make an offering to the gods. Um, and, and again, I, you know, for us, it's like sort of horrific. They're doing human sacrifices. But, and, and I certainly would never condone that. But, um, but you have to recognize that this was within the context of their culture and their religion. And, and um, I, I, not to excuse it, but you do have to place it in the historical context and understand <coughs> how they thought about it. Right? Um, and so I guess I got out over here. This is their religion. We actually have a book of theirs, the Popol Vuh, which, which sort of cre offers this creation narrative and talks about the justifications for the, for the rituals, etc. But the Maya also had a fairly compl complex um, and, and well-developed system of writing, which they, they, the Olmecs began it and the Mayas really developed it. But the most impressive thing, and, uh, and so we have lots of stories from the, I mean, we have Popol Vuh, the whole book, but we have lots of stories from the Maya, and we have lots of good history from the Maya. But one of the most complicated things about the Maya was their calendar. The Maya created a, a really complicated calendar to keep track of the seasons. And one of the interesting things about this is that um, the, the calendar is actually three different calendars, right? Um, their calendar is very accurate. If you, if you look at their calendar and how they determined what a day was and a year was, their year was only about 17 seconds off from our year, right? So that was a really accurate calendar. Um, and second, their calendar had these three numbering systems. The first is the, is the solar year, um, which, is, which is, you know, 365 days. Um, but they also had a ceremonial year, which was about 260 days. And so it was, it was actually based on the orbit of Venus. Um, and, and so they counted the time, number of times, you know, the, that Venus was circling the sun, et cetera. And they, and they had this ceremonial calendar. So every, it was 260 days of different festivals and things, and then it would start over as if it was a new year. But it rotated against this other calendar, the annual calendar of 365 days a year. And then finally, they had this long count calendar, which essentially um, started at 3114 BCE and just counted forward. Um, and, it, and it was a... It, it, it didn't sort of recognize the years. It was just simply a count of the days, if you will. Um, and that calendar actually ended, I think, 2012 or something like that. Um, and the Maya were, to create a calendar like that, you have to have enormous observational skills of the heavens um, to get the, the year down exactly. Um, but you also have to have some really good mathematical skills. And you have to have um, a whole lot of uh, ability to pass on knowledge, et cetera. So this was a really complex and complicated culture that developed. But in terms of technology and, and such, they were really, in some ways, very much comparable to the, uh, the, the Chinese or Mesopotamia or ancient Egypt of several thousand years earlier. And, and you know, Jared Diamond's argument is that because they really only started agriculture much later than China, and, you know, China started 4,000 years earlier, Mesopotamia started 4,000 years earlier, et cetera, that they were simply, their trajectory was behind. But in a larger sense, I think that this is a good lesson in history that you can make lots of comparisons between different regions and civilizations in history. You can say, yeah, they did this and they did that. And you can often learn by making really good comparisons between them. But you should not assume that there is a single path of development that every civilization has to follow. Because they don't, right? Some develop really great art and, and literature and architecture. But I mean, for instance, the Maya, um, really didn't have very many domesticated animals. They had the turkey and the guinea pig, but they didn't really have any large domesticated animals. And, bec and, and the, the <coughs> civilization in South America never really developed the wheel, largely because they didn't have any animals that could pull heavy carts or anything. The wheel wasn't that much use without horses, right? And so civilizations often develop, it might look like one is behind another, but often they're developing in just in different ways in response to their to their own culture in response to their, um, their environment. 
et cetera. I mean, you could look at the Bantu population and say they never came up with any great big empires and built monumental architecture, <clears throat> so they were backwards. They weren't backwards. They were perfectly well adapting to the environment they had, and, and it, they didn't have hydraulic societies because they didn't need them. And it's hydraulic societies that probably developed the, the government and the monumental architecture and all of that. So comparing civilizations, I mean, comparing civilizations is often a really productive thing to do. But don't fall into the trap of thinking there's just a single path and every society is either ahead or behind on that path. No, every civilization has its own path. And they develop in the way they develop. And, and you can't really say one is ahead or one is behind. So anyway, this is Meso Mesoamerica. You had the Olmecs, you had the Maya, you had Teotihuacan. Um, the Maya were sort of the height of Mesoamerican civilization uh, between 300 CE and 1100. We'll pick up again, we'll pick up this, this trail again with the Aztecs later. But this was the development of Mesoamerican civilization.